First off, I just wanted to say thank you to the massive 60 new subscribers that we've gained from the last video so far. So thank you for getting subscribed and hopefully I don't disappoint you like I do my family. Also, there's this cool new unofficial Steam Deck Discord which you should totally check out. The link is in the description below. So today I wanted to further elaborate on our last video about the theoretical performance of the Steam Deck by seeing how RDNA 1 scales into RDNA 2. From what I understand, one of the largest benefits of RDNA 2 over RDNA 1 is the Infinity Cache, a high-speed cache built directly onto the GPU die to act as a frame buffer to allow RDNA 2 to use a smaller memory bus but not be limited by memory bandwidth. This smaller memory bus is actually why RDNA 2 cards aren't as efficient at mining as RDNA 1 cards, but allows for higher performance at resolutions over 1080p like 1440 and 4K. At this time, we do not know if the Steam Deck will feature an infinity cache. If it did have an infinity cache, it would greatly reduce any memory latency bottlenecks that it does have. And just as another note on resolution, I do know what 16 by 10 is. It's just with the setup that I have here, a lot of games don't support a 800p resolution. So I know what it is, it's just for what I have here with super resolution and whatnot, it just does not let me test 800p. Now what I wanna try today is scale RDNA 1 in teraflops, or floating point operations per second. From the Steam Deck's relatively tiny 1.6 teraflops to the 6900 XT's massive 25 teraflops. Now, I'm gonna be doing all of this at 1080p because I want it to be both visually demanding enough to strain a lower end GPU, but not be low enough to where at higher GPU powers we see a CPU bottleneck. So unfortunately, I only have three RDNA GPUs. I've got an RDNA 1 5500 XT with 22 compute units. I've got a 5700 XT with 40 compute units. And then I have an RDNA 2 6900 XT with 80 compute units. So first up, I'm going to scale the 5500 XT from 1.6 teraflops all the way up to its own 5.1 teraflops. Then I'm going to scale the 5700 XT down to 5.1 teraflops and then run it up to its very own 9.8 teraflops. Then I'm going to scale the 6900 XT down to 9.8 teraflops and then scale it up to its 25 teraflops. That way we get a good idea of how RDNA 1 scales with different memory buses and latencies as far as different architectures go. What I'm really interested to see here is if the 6900 XT benefits at all from its infinity cache at 1080p. For this test, we're using the Metro X's 1080p Ultra Benchmark. If you want to try to duplicate our results, I greatly encourage you to do so and let us know what you find in the comments. So with the 5500 XT running at 1.6 teraflops or theoretical performance of the Steam Deck, we saw a depressing 15 FPS average. But honestly, at 800p and medium to low settings, the Steam Deck should play this game without any problems. Then when we stepped the 5500 XT up to its full 5.1 teraflops, it achieved 38 FPS average or an increase of about 150% FPS for 220% more theoretical performance. So we did not see linear scaling on the 5500 XT. But when we swapped out the 5500 XT for the 5700 XT and then dropped the 5700 XT's theoretical performance down to 5.1 teraflops, we saw 45 FPS average or 200% more FPS than the 5500 XT running at 1.6 teraflops with an increase of 220% the theoretical performance of the Steam Deck. So pretty good scaling or possibly indicating that the RDNA 1 cards scale well with memory bandwidth or more cores running at lower speeds. This result could indicate to us that the 5500 XT running at full speed does have a memory bottleneck. Running the 5700 XT again at full speed of 9.8 teraflops yielded 62 FPS or 40% more FPS at 92% higher theoretical performance. So again, like with the 5500 XT running at full speed, we see a potential memory bottleneck or a limitation of the architecture running at full speed. Then when we swapped in the 6900 XT and turned it down to 9.8 teraflops like the 5700 XT, literally cutting this poor GPU's performance in less than half, we saw 66 FPS or 6% more than the 5700 XT running at the same speed. Which is no surprise judging by the slides from Extreme Tech where they tested a 6700 XT versus the 5700 XT 
and saw similar performance increases at the same clock speeds. I even went ahead and ran the test again on the 5700 XT and 6900 XT at 1440p, and we saw the gap widen with the 5700 XT falling from 62 FPS to 45, where the 6900 XT fell less from 66 to 55, once again mirroring the results that Extreme Tech found in their testing. And then back at 1080p, the 6900 XT turned up to 25 teraflops, so double that and 2.5 times that of a 5700 XT, we saw 118 FPS averages. So about 100% more FPS for 150% more theoretical performance. In fact, more than 150% theoretical performance. Somewhere in there, we lost about 50% of the theoretical performance to FPS ratio. So unfortunately, as fast as RDNA 2 is, at these lower resolutions, it does not appear to benefit as heavily from its infinity cache. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw up a graph with some nice music playing to show some of the relative performance scaling that we saw, and you can get a better idea of what the scale, what the ramp looks like. And then we'll go ahead and draw our own conclusions. So from what I can tell, if the Steam Deck is not limited by memory speed, or thermal throttling, it should perform identical to what we saw in our last video. The 5500 XT is not memory bottlenecked at all at lower clock speeds. And scaling it up to the 5700 XT shows almost perfect scaling when you are again not limited by memory bottlenecks. And then scaling the 6900 XT down to the 5700 XT, we saw a 6% increase in performance at 1080p with possible diminishing returns below 1080p resolution because from what I can tell, the Infinity Cache is helping it but not probably as much at lower resolutions where, again, memory bottlenecks are not gonna be a problem. Remember, both these GPUs have the same memory bus. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today, guys. Go ahead and let me know in the comments what you think of my testing methodology, if it is crap and biased. I try to make the videos that I would like to see as far as technical specs and how they perform. So if you learned something from this video, go ahead and leave a like, get subscribed for future tech stuff nonsense. And like always, I'll see you next time.